Hello and welcome uh, along to this video. This is just going to be more of a chatty uh, explanations type video. Unfortunately we're not actually going to be flying today but we'll get back to that very soon. I know I haven't done a stream in a while. It's been very busy over here and um, that's why of course uh, I made the channel and why I made all the uh, aircraft and sound schemes. So we'll get back to it as soon as I possibly can. We'll get doing some more streams and uh, maybe even get back into FSX if I can get back into FSX pilot course not quite as uh, as realistic at all but you know it can be a bit of fun to do a few flights uh, with that um, but I'm here really to just talk about some changes that have occurred in the Eurofly world uh, mainly aircrafts and uh, turbo you will have seen them if you're on the Eurofly uh, mailing list um, if you're not then well you know don't sweat it because uh, whenever there's a big change like this there's a lot of opinionated people uh, so uh, you know you haven't really missed much as long as you've been following the, the news in general on the the Facebook page uh, of Eurofly which I encourage people who have Facebook to uh, to go and follow because then you get the, the news anyway um, but that's not really the point of the video uh, the point is the fact that um, there's been a big change in, in aircraft and turbo policy as I said so let's start with with aircraft uh, the problem was that people were making what I would call super planes so they had um, a huge range with a huge amount of fuel or they had a very high maximum speed even without turbo or uh, I don't know they had a, an incredible amount of um, of, uh, of passengers on them you know you'd see people with three or four thousand passengers making ridiculous amounts of money for the the company on this um, fictional um, company a, a page that Stefan has made for Eurofly and the developer wanted to address this uh, and I completely with him on that fact that uh, there's no um, problem with with addressing that um, it is a shame when people decide to make unrealistic aircraft um, I personally have a problem with turbo and aircrafts going faster than they would usually but uh, when you've got aircrafts that are completely unrealistic and people can essentially cheat the game in the task that's where the problems start to uh, arise so um, I, I you see if it were me I would set a cap on uh, on aircraft specifications that's how I would personally do it uh, I would just put a cap on the amount of passengers you can have I would put a cap on the amount of, of say range you can have and perhaps an, a cap on the amount of turbo you can have but that's not the approach the developer chose uh, he chose to make an official planes list on the website and um, many people have been making aircraft specifications um, and have done so uh, and changed them uh, some realistic aircraft as I said some weren't realistic because they could carry like 3,000 passengers or something um, I've been trying over the past you know I don't know when did I get Eurofly probably uh, about a year ago to uh, correct some of the specifications based on on various sources of data uh, I've used real pilot YouTube videos I've used real pilot accounts online I've used uh, aircraft um, manuals and information but we'll get to all that later um, the fact is that Stefan has introduced an official planes list so I think they're about 80 aircraft on the official planes list um, and basically what this does is whenever you load up in an aircraft say a 737 it will check uh, if you are online it will it will sync up with the server and check that this aircraft is is certified so as long as that aircraft is called the same as the name on the server so Boeing 737 your aircraft will then be certified and um, this is where the sort of dubious part comes in the fact that uh, the specifications that are on the server will be forced upon your aircraft um, so the specifications that I made um, are on the server and I like to think they're pretty much correct um, relatively within the boundaries of Eurofly um, and uh, and they will be put onto your aircraft just so that even if you say go into the 737 air file and decide you're going to change it so it has 3,000 passengers or something it won't take effect and as long as your aircraft is certified as long as you're flying a certified aircraft then you uh, will find that 
your flights will count in the rankings that have recently been created. I'm not entirely sure how fair these rankings are, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I crashed a, a plane the other day and went from, f uh, I think it was about 45th in the rankings, down to about 900. So I, I'm a little bit mm, unsure about how fair these rankings are. I would say just take them with a pinch of salt. Don't really... You know, they get reset every three months. It's not really why. If you are coming on Eurofly, put it this way. If you're coming on Eurofly with the sole ambition to increase your rank constantly and be number one, and you are like, I need to be number one, I need to be number one, I've got to fly certified aircraft, I've got to do this to be number one, then, you know, you're doing it all wrong, in my opinion. There is no need. Um, you know, I'd like to be to be higher up on the rankings. So I... I you know, we'll fly aircraft around a bit and uh, and try and increase my ranking. But it isn't my sole purpose of using Eurofly. I always say the reason I use Eurofly and the reason all people use Eurofly is to have fun. It is a game. It is not... Um, well, we'll get into this later. I'm, I'm trying to split this video up. But it was not, is not, and will never be a fully-fledged flight simulator. Um for reasons I'll explain later. But let's get back to the aircraft. So yes, these aircraft are with my specifications on the website and um, you can get them from various places. Um, Stefan has uploaded an official aircraft pack onto the uh, onto the server that you can actually go and download um, as well. So when you launch up in a plane, if it is certified, it will count. Um, you can launch up in an aircraft that is not certified. That is to say, you can um, make your own aircraft, realistic or, or not realistic, and it will not be certified um, because of the fact that it, it's not on the server. All that means is it will not count towards your rank. It doesn't mean you can't use it for tasks. Um, to the best of my knowledge, all it means is it won't count towards your rank. Um, and the reason a lot of controversy has been um, brought up, especially by a few people, is because they feel these specifications aren't correct and they don't like the fact that these specifications are being forced um, on them. You know, because of the fact that when you, you launch a 737, these are the specifications for that plane you have to use. And people are, well, one or two people are saying these specifications are wrong. Um, it says on the website, apparently, I can't remember the exact wording, that I am some kind of expert or technological um, advisor uh, to do with aircraft. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it says, but I wasn't informed of that. And Stefan just put that up um, on the, the website when he made this new ranking section. Uh, so I wasn't informed. I had no idea about that. So, you know, I know people, because people tend to say, I don't think your specifications are right. Why are they not right? Because you are supposed to be an expert. Uh, well, no, actually, I'm no expert. I've never claimed to be an expert. I'm just here to have fun. I made these specifications for people to use I put them out there for people to use. I could have kept them to myself, but I put them out there for people to use, to have a bit of fun with, to try and make the game a bit more realistic. And, um, and you know, most people enjoy them. I don't care whether you enjoy them or not, to be honest with you. If you don't, then, you know, make your own aircraft. Uh, I have no issue with that. But um, the problem I the only problem I see with this aircraft system is that aircraft are forced on you. If you do make a realistic plane, um, it won't be certified. You can send it to Stefan, and I'm sure he will upload it. Uh, but if if you want to change the specifications of an aircraft, then um, you can't really do that because you're sort of trapped that that's the only thing i'm not for it's a difficult situation here because i see i understand exactly why it was needed because obviously people were making these super planes so there needs to be a limit i don't particularly think it's fair to force these specifications on people um because of the fact that you will get people whinging and crying on the mailing list saying I don't like these specifications, I want to change them, but I can't change them. 
and uh, you know whilst I might not agree with them and I think my specifications are pretty much correct and I'll talk about that a little bit later you know it isn't really fair that they're forced on people um, and I don't want people to think that I have somehow interfered with this and told Stefan you have to put these specifications up no one can use anything else other than my specifications um, because I know that's the way some people will see it um, so let me just first off say as I said these specifications were compiled over time I used many sources of data uh, people have said on the on the mailing list uh, I won't go into details that I have used unreliable sources um, there are only so many sources on the internet that you can use to get aircraft specifications I mean do people expect me to walk into a Boeing 737 cockpit and say oi tell me your maximum range today please uh, you know it doesn't work like that you know there are varying sources of information I can get there are real pilot um, data uh, there is real pilot data I should say on the internet which is probably the most reliable source and then there's aircraft technical manuals which are also very reliable sources but you see when I'm making an aircraft there are many websites which say exactly the same thing and then you come across a couple of other websites that say different things so it's very difficult to make a plane because you might have two or three manuals and pilots saying oh yeah the range of this aircraft is uh, of aircraft A is I don't know 5,000 kilometers and then you could come across another uh, official manual saying oh actually yeah on a good day you could get it to 7,000 kilometers if you haven't got many passengers or something and it's like oh so what do I put um, so all the specifications that I made on the dot exactly no they're not for various reasons and it doesn't matter who makes them they will not be on the dot because you cannot have them on the dot unless you are on a, uh, a fully fledged flight simulator which we currently do not have at the minute I've continued to say that we don't have a fully fledged flight simulator in FSX in anything because we have no it's your plane anymore so we don't have one and here is another point the limitations of Eurofly for speeds for weights for all sorts of things aircraft have to take into account things like uh, the weather the elevation the flap setting of the aircraft uh, the I don't know you could have even cargo on the aircraft which we don't have uh, you could have the length of the runway you could have uh, there's so many things I could list and we don't have them in Eurofly we may in the future we may but currently we don't have them so it will never be 100% realistic um, and it, it just can't can't be that way um, in in real aircraft if you take a 737 there is a huge deficit between the lowest takeoff speed and the highest takeoff speed a 737 could take off really at probably about 210 kilometers per hour or less a little bit less it could also take off at say 280 kilometers per hour or probably even a bit more in real life or each of those scenarios is possible due to the, all the conditions I've just mentioned now how do I model that in my specifications and the same goes for anyone else making specifications you just can't because Eurofly doesn't model that that huge deficit you put in a takeoff speed that is what you get um, and uh, there is there is some leeway with the takeoff speed and landing speed on Eurofly. There is 20 kilometers above and 20 kilometers below. So you know you do get a bit of a leeway with it, which makes it a bit more realistic in in my view. So no, things will not be exact, uh, but there are limitations, unfortunately, with Eurofly. Um, you know, and what was uh, I going to say as well? Oh yeah, so you know, as I said, I put these specifications out there for people to to enjoy. Um, I haven't had really any complaints about them until they were enforced on people um, with this new website. That is that is something that I don't necessarily agree with. As I've said, um, I, I I don't have any input on how the game is run or anything like that. People may think I do because it says I'm an expert on the website. No, I don't. 
Um, I, I don't necessarily agree with them being enforced. Uh, I'm perfectly willing to listen to people uh, who, who have new aircraft specifications. Um, it's just that I know that no aircraft specifications can be right with Eurofly, really, because whatever you put in, Eurofly just does not model it realistically enough. And that's not a criticism, really, of Eurofly, because Eurofly is a one-man one -man project, and I'll explain even more about that later. But um, But it just doesn't, so it doesn't matter what, really, you put in. Um, people can sort of trumpet their own specifications and say mine are the best they are realistic but they're not because Eurofly doesn't model it like that uh, you know it just doesn't have that sort of capability uh, so no specifications are really right I just I have just tried my best to get mine as close as they can be in in the game as it is at the moment that's that's all and I do not give a damn whether people use my specifications or don't you know as I said I put them out there for people to use along with my sound schemes uh, for all the aircraft which took a long long time to make these sound schemes are not easy in any way and I know a lot of people do enjoy them uh, and I'm glad they enjoy them that's why I put them there um, like I said though I don't care whether people use them I don't care what you want to fly really um, as long as you enjoy Eurofly which is the sole purpose of the game for me then I don't care uh, which is why it's a, it's a bit uh, annoying for some people I can see that these specifications have been enforced on you um, you know if you don't like my specifications go and uh, go and make your own aircraft I don't mind I'm not going to have a go at you and say, why aren't you using my specifications? I don't care. I'm using my specifications and I enjoy it. If you don't, then fine. I don't care. But um, obviously, they won't... These specifications, if you change them, won't have any impact on your rank because of the fact that you've got these certified aircraft. That Now, that is a little bit unfair, and I've said that. Uh, I have no, no issue with saying that. It is unfair that you're forced to uh, to fly these specific aircraft um, and I can see the position of other people where I think I'm right with my specifications other people may think they're right um, but at the end of the day people are being forced to use these specifications um, I just think in the end you just have to enjoy Eurofly for what it is take everything with a pinch of salt you know the rankings are not everything uh, it doesn't really matter because you know when you start out on Eurofly you're going to have loads of crashes because you've got to learn how to fly anyway um, and you're going to have the odd crash anyway because you know strange things happen they, they do I mean the other day I had a, a bug where my plane just went into a nosedive when I was using the auto altitude it's recently been fixed in the, the latest uh, version update but uh, that's the bug I had and you know there was nothing I could do about it and we crashed unfortunately but you know that's the way it is it is a game um, it's not real so take it with a pinch of salt and you know I'm not going to apologize that you have to use my specifications um, it is a bit unfortunate but you can make your own aircraft there is nothing stopping anyone making their own aircraft uh, to use for the game at all it doesn't matter um, it just means they won't count in your rankings which is you know a bit unfortunate but you know just get on with it I'm not really bothered about the rankings uh, and I know it's not necessarily fair but at the moment that's just the way it is and I, I can assure everyone my specifications were not taken lightly it wasn't something I've just made up overnight and just gone okay I need to make specifications uh, for an Airbus A330 or something let's just stick it into Google what's the first one that comes up right we'll trust this it's not like that at all I've anguished over these for quite a while to be honest with you and you know spent hours on some of them going you know well okay let's change this to that and let's try it again in the game see how that works okay yeah that changes the takeoff speed quite a bit let's, let's move that back a bit all these sorts of things they weren't done lightly um, 
and neither were the sound schemes. The sound schemes took even longer. I mean, if you just imagine how long it takes to find good audio for these aircraft to get it recorded and then clipped, you you can't imagine how annoying it is when you have a good piece of audio and it won't loop properly and all you can hear is tick, tick, tick as the audio keeps clicking. It's so annoying and it takes so long to get it exactly right. Um, it, it it is a lot of work but I enjoy doing it and I enjoy flying the planes I've made and that's really all that matters and if one person comes to me and says you know oh nice thanks for sending me these aircraft you made I enjoyed flying them then that's it I've succeeded I don't care because people are enjoying them and that's really all that matters if someone comes and says I don't like your aircraft your specifications are rubbish they're not real I don't give a damn because other people do like them and other people are flying them um, so you go and make your own aircraft um, and just have fun with those uh, the other thing was about um, turbo wasn't it yes turbo has been changed slightly some of the task packs now make it so that you can't use um, turbo and if you do use turbo say on a free flight it won't be counted towards your ranking either uh, this one I, I'm a little bit less on the fence with. I think people should be able to use Turbo uh, in in a way. Um, I don't really think Turbo should exist. Many people have said this and I completely agree. There should be a save function. You can save your flight and then there's not really any um, any issue. Really, You can just carry on from where you left off. Or I would simply say have a cap on Turbo this is what I've been saying for quite a while why don't we just have it so that we have you know you, you have a certain amount of time you can use turbo say every month that way it's not going to be overused um, you're going to have a I don't know what that, that time would be exactly but it would be an amount of time and you say okay okay people you can use turbo but only for this Epson amount okay button. Profile, untitled scenes. Scenes oh. Open broadcaster. oh thank you for interrupting me Epson um, yeah you can use turbo but you know people won't be able to just continually use turbo to get round everything because some people do you know even if you've got a task that's like a 300 kilometer flight they just go turbo and just ram it to full power and uh, there's no need you know and I've seen people do that and there, there is no need because you're not really getting any sort of um, experience of really flying an aircraft but Nobody wants to sit in front of a computer for a five-hour flight or more, really, whilst it's doing it on Euroflight. Nobody in their right mind would want to do that, uh, really. I, I don't understand. I mean, there are people, perhaps. I have done it very occasionally, but that is when, I, you know, I, I quite enjoy fly on Eurofly because I can get some music going and if I've got some work I need to do on my laptop I can just get on with that and leave it flying pretty much uh, especially if there's um, an autopilot so you know that's fine that's all good but you nobody really wants to sit there for that long it's just it's not fun I've tried to do it I tried to do a stream I think I tried to do London to Toronto or something and I couldn't do it I ended up turbo because I just couldn't deal with it I couldn't sit there for that long it was just Ugh, it was horrible uh, you know and um, and that's the problem with it really because if you imagine in real life pilots can sort of take a walk they can go and have a sleep uh, on long haul flights they can eat a bit of food they've always got a relief crew you know we can't be on Eurofly and go excuse me can we just call in the relief, clue, uh, relief crew please you know that's not really how it works you, you have to plan, fly the plane yourself so I think you need some form of turbo I think it needs to be limited so either cap it or I, I don't know uh, we definitely need a save feature um, yeah I, I think that would be good um, I'm, I'm I'm pretty you know I, I agree with people on that and I think everyone's pretty much unanimous on that um, that turbo is something that uh, people should be able to use um, it's just not using it to an excess that you're using it on every single flight because that is sort of going against um, 
the the fun of it really i mean i think so again i don't care whether people use turbo or not to be honest with you um because it doesn't affect me but it, it is quite annoying and i see why it shouldn't count towards the rankings as well in a way um only because if you've got someone going on turbo and flying like 15,000 kilometers or something in a really short space of time they're going to gain loads of points and loads of places when really all they've done is flown for a short space of time and just turn turbo on uh, and they haven't really done anything special um, if you know what I mean uh, I do like the way we have it now though where I think it's if you have a hundred hours without a crash you get bumped up a lot with badges and things and if you have I think it's a hundred is it no is it a thousand kilometers without a crash you you have a badge I like that that's, that's a good system it's a good way to reward people for not crashing that's a nice way to do it um, and for people, you know, who are, who are doing it properly, that's good. Um, and, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. The only other point I was going to say was, you know, like I said, Eurofly is, is always something to have fun with. It's never going to be a fully-fledged flight simulator. I would love it to get more realistic, and I think it will. It certainly will. Um, I don't know the developers' uh, computing or uh, computer knowledge really at all so I don't know what sort of plans he has but we have to understand that this is a one-man project everyone keeps saying this it's a one-man project this guy has family he has a life and you know he's produced something that is at least fun for me and for quite a few others to play and you know I see no reason he doesn't have to dedicate his entire uh, time to it you know of course there are things that could be better you know of course there is uh, th there are things that he could have some help with um, and of course the game could be more realistic but he's a one-man developer and it's also an audio game um, and I've said this before FSX and visual sims had many people working on them it took them many many years they are much more realistic because they take so many more uh, facts into account and as I've said before let me give you a couple of examples there was a company who made an A320 Preface X um, and it took them I think about six years to make this aircraft six years to make an Airbus A320 that is fully functional and is very close to the real thing or, or pretty close you know it's not going to be you know spot on is it but it's, it's pretty close and it took them six years for one aircraft that is how detailed some of these things are nobody in our community could really do that because that plane and all aircraft in, in FSX and P3D and all that sort of stuff that are really really realistic are very visual um, and it would I mean just imagine you get into uh, to Eurofly for the very first time you're a blind you know enthusiast and you turn on this aircraft and just to get it flying you have to turn on hundreds and hundreds of systems yes in in real world that's what a pilot does but um, but they've had all the, this training and it's probably a lot easier when you can see the controls what sort of things you need to do you know yeah we'll flip this switch oh look there's that panel let's go and do that we could have a sort of toned down version of that uh, with Eurofly in the end I think that's what we sort of have to to hope for we can get a sort of uh, a toned down version of that and we can have more realism but it's never going to be fully realistic it's just not feasible it's too much to demand um, and you know Eurofly can only get better that's the way you have to look at it as good as it is at the minute is it fully realistic not really but it's fun and it can only get better and you know maybe in a few years it will be at a level where we can say you know what it's not fully realistic it'll never be fully realistic but it has some elements in it where it's pretty close to the real thing ish and it even has some of that now I mean parts of the uh, the autopilot are, are pretty realistic I mean you can dial in altitudes and things you've got your um, TCAS which is quite realistic um, and things like that so 
that's really all I have to say, to be honest with you. Aircraft, yes, I know it's annoying that these specs have been forced on you. I have spent extensive time on these and, you know, I am no expert, but I have done my best from various pretty reliable sources and, you know, they are they are done to the best of my ability at least um, and if you don't like them you don't have to fly with them you can make your own aircraft and change things around there's no issue with that I know you won't um, register on rankings and that's quite annoying um, you know maybe in the future we, we can change that and we could have a sort of function where things are capped like you know you can have so many passengers on things like that so it does it just doesn't go crazy um but until then just enjoy the aircraft we have got if you want to change them change them and fly them anyway uh you know with turbo hopefully in the future we can have a save function and we can put again another cap on turbo or something like that um and just remember eurofly is a game I have always said this it is a game you ask pretty much anyone uh, you know if you if you did a, a survey or something in the community most people would say it's a game it's not realistic it's probably not going to be realistic but um, it's relatively fun and it can only get better it's going to get closer to the real thing um, that's that's the thing we have to bear in mind it's never going to be 100 percent the real thing but we can get it closer and as it gets closer for people who are um for people who are enthusiasts that will make it more and more interesting so thanks for watching anyway um let's not have a big raging discussion about it in the comments because i'm sure there'll be the odd few people who watch this who do disagree with my specifications because I know they're out there um, you know what whatever let's just not burn bridges over it because you know what it's it's aircraft specifications for Eurofly uh, I think my specifications are pretty realistic you probably think yours are you know what that's absolutely fine that's 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 cool I have no issues with it We've probably got them from different sources. We both think they're reliable. People can fly what they want and they can all have fun. And it doesn't really matter because it's only Eurofly. Um, and, you know, we can improve it as, as the future goes, as the future uh, comes up. And we can we can change things. And in the future, I'm sure Eurofly will be a, um, a much improved simulator you know if you imagine it in in version one it changed and it's now in version two and it's much improved you can you can imagine what version three is going to bring and, and then so on and if people continue to work on it then um, I'm sure it will get better we'll just have to wait and see but uh, thanks for watching anyway and I will be back with some more streams in the future so that we can all continue to enjoy Eurofly no matter what right See you in the Many. next video. This was a long video for for me to just uh, sit and talk and do this. But anyway, it was important for people to to understand. Right. See you.